Welcome to E4 Electric live from Bangkok. Today we're going to talk about um, not a very controversial topic. I'm sure everybody is going to get along. We're going to talk about who's better, Trump or Harris. But, but, but we are going to limit the topic to just electric cars. So essentially the topic is, you know, right here. Who, who's better for electric truck, for electric cars and trucks, uh, Trump or Harris. And just in a few minutes, I'm going to be joined by uh, Tom Malogny from State of Charge. We haven't done that in a while. He's actually in America. I am in Thailand. We're going to have a good time. Uh, let me know where you're watching me from, which platform you're watching me on. Uh, we're also going to try to, um, you know, not uh, throw mud at each other. Please be respectful in your comments. For me, I, I have to give you guys a disclaimer. I am a true independent. I'm not a Republican or Democrat, conservative or, or liberal. Uh, I don't like neither one of the candidates. I'm not going to vote for either one of them. Uh, however, I also think, just like Biden administration has done a lot of good things, uh, Trump has also done some things uh, that, that I think was good. So I am, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm very balanced. So, uh, so the comment like this is, is going to get you banned. Uh, okay. The great Babu, we're not here to talk like five-year-olds. We're going to actually have a, uh, a discussion. So, uh, uh, please stay adults or you're just going to get banned. Okay. Uh, now, so before I bring Tom in, I, I want to say that actually, I think a lot of people think that, uh, the, the, the answer is very obvious because just generally, you know, uh, liberals were more pro, uh, have always been pro. Uh, green energy and uh, uh, conservatives were against, but I think the answer here is not as easy as you guys would think. So I actually have a few interesting points to make. Feel free to make your points in the chat, but again, please be respectful. But uh, before I bring uh, Tom in, let me play a few clips from, and like I said, I think we know where uh, Kamala Harris stands on it. She is part of a Biden administration. They have passed the infrastructure bill uh, that provides for $7,500. Um, it used to be a tax credit, but now it's essentially an incentive. Uh, there's about four thousand dollars for used cars. Uh, they they allocated billions of dollars for infrastructure. So it's fair to say we kind of know what their position is because they're in power right now. So let's talk about. Uh, let me play a few clips of Donald Trump. Uh, the first clip I'm going to play is uh, from his speech at the Republican uh, Republican National uh, Convention. Here we go. And I will end the electric vehicle mandate on day one. Okay, so uh, he basically, and he said it many times that he's going to end the electric mandate on day one. So uh, there are a couple of things to be said. First of all, there is no electric car mandate uh, right now that a, that a U.S. president, no matter who he or she is, uh, can just uh, uh, cancel out. Um, the bill was passed with Congress, so in order to you know, cancel that bill, you would have to pass another bill with the Congress. However, president and administration can reallocate the funds. Um, there is a mandate in California and some other states, but obviously U.S. president as part of the federal government has no power of that. Uh, EPA does have some goals uh, that are way beyond the next president's presidency anyway that they have. And currently the government does have a plan to replace the entire government uh, car fleet with electric cars but at a pace that it will take about 13 years. So literally nothing that the next president can do is going to change any of what I just mentioned, really. So, so just to be clear, because I got a lot of people saying, you know, mandate, mandate, mandate. There is no such a thing as a mandate on buying or selling electric cars currently. Okay. Now, there's also a good point to be made that just because he is uh, for, the, for, for the end of the mandate, uh, it doesn't mean that he is against electric cars. Those are not technically mutually exclusive. So um, so I would say that I partially agree with that. All right, let me play the next clip. And this is from a more recent rally. I think this was in Georgia, but don't quote me on that. So listen to, let's listen to this. She wants to get rid of gas-powered cars and replace them with all electric. They don't go far. They cost too much. They're all made in China. Other than that, they're fantastic. And I'm for electric cars. I have to be, you know, because Elon endorsed me very strongly, Elon. Okay, so uh, a few things to unpack here. So first of all, um, uh, they not the, the electric cars are not all made in China. So so let's just get some facts straight here, uh, regardless of who you support. So that's just 
simply incorrect. Um, uh, secondly, um, you know, I'm not, I, and I would like to know, you know, for those of you who do support Trump, you know, how do you feel about your candidate kind of changing his mind, or, or even publicly admitting that he has changed his mind, or 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 um, took a certain position because essentially a billionaire t t told him to. So I, I kind of, I just kind of wondering about that. But okay, so let's but let's talk about what he actually said that he's actually for electric cars. Uh, now that speech does go a little bit further, and he he talks about how he's only for a portion of the fleet to be electric cars. But obviously, nothing is going to happen overnight. It's going to be many, many years, if not decades, when the entire fleet is re replaced with with electric cars. All right. Um, now the last one is actually the most interesting one, and I'm probably uh, we'll, 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 me and Tom will talk about it because. There's, there's actually he's got a good point here, and I have another video coming tomorrow uh, about this. But listen to this. For eight chargers, they spent $9 billion. Is that a good deal? Okay. So, uh, you know, at first when I heard that, uh, I have to say, he was like, well, this is just one of those crazy things that Trump says. Come to find out, uh, you know, the the infrastructure bill has been passed over over two years ago now. And there is indeed a, a ridiculous, I think almost a billion dollars or more has been allocated to building out the chargers. Now, listen, I understand that it takes a while to build an infrastructure and there's a lot of things goes on with it. You know, Tom will probably speak to it more because he knows he works with a lot of uh, fast charging networks and, and charging networks. Uh, he will tell you that it, 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 it takes a while, but it's been over two years. And, and I looked it up and it looks like they've built total so far using that money. He said eight or nine, right? But they, they built 20, which is essentially nothing. And I got to tell you, for administration that pushed so, I mean, this was a bipartisan bill. And for the administration that's in charge and knows they may not be in charge in another half a year, this certainly for me, for my taste, has been you know, a bit of a failure. And by, by a little bit, I mean by, by, by a, a, a lot of a failure. Now, I know there's probably a million excuses, but at the same time, I got to tell you guys, I, I was surprised. I, I genuinely was quite surprised at only a few of them. So, and this is why I have Tom on in just a second, because he will definitely shine some light on this, uh, because he knows a, a, a lot about this. And um, after that, we're going to also take your questions. Uh, and again, don't forget, uh, please be respectful. Please, uh, please only um, talk about things with some backup data or reasoning and stuff like that. No mud throwing uh, whatsoever, please. Uh, okay. All right. So it's time. Let's bring uh, Tom in. Uh, Tom, how are you doing, my friend? We haven't done this in a while. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Uh, doing fine over here in New Jersey. Actually, uh, sitting right next to, unfortunately, we can't see it the way the camera's um, set up with my uh, brand new 2024 Chevy Equinox EV. Just two days ago, I leased a new Equinox EV to add it to my, um, I guess, building fleet of electric vehicles here that I can use for long-term testing. But I'm doing well here in New Jersey. It's uh, Weather's really bad here now. We, we're getting four days of, of serious rain. But other than that, all's well, Alex. Good to see you. Yeah, same man. We haven't done this in a while, but I started doing this live streams uh, and 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 thought, hey, we gotta have Tom back. I mean, he's a big YouTuber now. I don't know. I maybe I had to call your agent to to get you on and booked. But uh, I'm glad you're here. Um, okay. So uh, and by the way, uh, we're gonna get back to your new acquisition. By the way, but I saw that on on I think Twitter. Uh, I was like, wait, that that is that is that is odd i did not expect you to buy that one so we'll we'll talk about it in just a second so um all right you know you've heard the clips i'm sure you've seen these full speeches and everything and i of course i had to cut them out there's a little bit more context to it and like i said um i, I i'm as you know i'm not a republican democrat and in 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 and i kind of feel like i have a pretty sober view of of the middle and i think people like me will decide this election right the the, the independence um however you know, for this particular topic, uh, you know, it, there's a lot to be said to, you know, those three clips that, that that Donald Trump said. So let's start with the first one, you know, because I got so, so many comments uh, for, you know, mainly from Trump supporters saying like, yeah, we don't like mandate, 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 you know. And then, as you know, technically, there is no such, such thing as a mandate, definitely not the one that a U.S. president can get rid of on day one. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I mean, politicians do this all the time. 
uh, you know, they they take a hot button subject and they stretch the truth, you know, to to align with the narrative that they're trying to push. Uh, yes, there is no mandate. Uh, there are uh, certain requirements. There are certain, um, uh, like you mentioned earlier, governments buying a certain amount of uh, electric vehicles or zero emission vehicles for the next 13 years to replace the fleet. Uh, there's there's certainly some states that have set uh, uh, goals, future goals. To, most of them center around 2035, which is in 11 years of saying, you know, we're going to ban the um, uh, uh, the sale of new combustion vehicles. No one's going to take away your old combustion vehicle. But honestly, those were those those are guidelines more than anything. That you know, the next governor that comes in could rip it up. So it was more of like trying to align in my my opinion, with what we're seeing around the world. And, uh, you know, around the world, they are setting uh, goals for eliminating combustion, new sales of combustion. And as you know, Alex, selling automobiles, it's it's a global industry. We can't be on an island um, or we'll be left behind. And I think that's more of what we're seeing is that some of the, say, more progressive states saying, you know, um, Europe is is saying 2035 is our goal for eliminating new combustion sales. So we're 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 gonna we're, we're gonna agree to to set that goal also. But as I said, that, that's it's a goal. The goalpost could be moved at any time if the market doesn't mature on a timeline that people thought it would. Well, you know, and that actually brings me to another interesting point, which again a lot of Republicans might argue against, and uh, which what. What is the role of the government, right? Like the, the, the liberals usually argue that, hey, listen, the goal of the government and the really responsibility of the government is to, you know, uh, provide the basics uh, and protect the citizens from the basic needs or from basic needs being taken away from them. Like, for example, you know, the government job to have a military and, you know, protect us from the invasion. It's the government job to make sure that we have clean water and, you know, certain drugs are not making it into the healthcare system, uh, that we have seat belts in the car so we don't fly through the windshield and die at the high rate. Um, is providing clean air a, a job of a government? Because people might say it's not. Right. Well, I mean, that's depends on what your opinion, uh, where you, where you, what aisle you sit on. I think in some instances, you know, there are people that believe in as little government as possible, and and that that's better than you know having any government uh, I- intervention. But I mean, as as we've clearly seen in the past, if government doesn't in- get involved at some level. What happens is, you know, private industry will, let's say, pollute our rivers. You know, they'll have factories built right along main water sources and just have sewage going right into the water stream. If there's nobody there to say, hey, you can't do that. You know, you you, uh, you know, we saw that over years in the United States. I mean, we witnessed it here in New Jersey. The Passaic River was so it went from such a pristine river, you know, 100 years ago to being so polluted, you couldn't even swim in it. And, and with the uh, creation of the EPA uh, under Nixon's um, uh, uh, term, that slowly changed. And over the course of the, the 20 years after the EPA was created, the Passaic River cleaned up massively, where to the point where you know it, it doesn't even resemble what it looked like in the early 70s. So I do think the government does play a role in, in helping us not go overboard. But then the point becomes, well, what? how far do they go? How intrusive do they get? Uh, in assuring that our waterways are clean, our air is clean, you know, and I'm not going to say, you know, oh, here's the line. This is how far they go. I think that's up for debate. And that's constantly a push and a pull um, with Democrats and Republicans, with Democrats typically being on the side of saying, you know, we need more government intervention to protect uh, our citizens and Republicans taking the other stance and saying that, you know, uh, industry should play a bigger role in deciding how far the government can, you know, limit what they do. Now, listen, uh, we can pick on words and look up dictionaries and Google stuff in terms of what the mandate is. And I think a lot of people argued with me on this in a comment section, but um, I, you know, EPA does have a goal, right? And it's not like they are like sitting around just saying, oh, we hope, right? Uh, fingers crossed. No, this goal is will require 
a certain amount of vehicles to be sold that meet certain standards, you know, with, with the EPA and everything. So let's see, let, let's just call that goal slash, you know, future requirement uh, a, a mandate. And also let's talk about what they also threw in there, the $7,500, you know, point of sale credit and, and, and for new and also there's a smaller one for used cars, you know, um, there's an argument to be made uh, that, hey, listen, um, you know, this is this is a capitalist country. If we have a new technology, yes, we can help it out, you know, a little bit as a government has. I mean, it's been quite a few years now, um, you know, but at some point, you know, we, 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 we got to kick this, uh, you know, training wheels off. Um, it has to be a fair market and, you know, let let the best men win. You know, we got hybrids, we got gas cars, we got electric cars. Um, and on top of that, you know, Tesla, when Tesla was setting their sales records, you know, there was no $7,500 credit that they were qualified for at that time. As a matter of fact, when it came back, you know, now I'm not saying there's a direct correlation there, but I'm just saying they were able to sell just fine without it and outsell everybody else where now uh, with it, you know, the, their sales are going down, which, you know, is for other reasons. So what do you think about, you know, it, are we doing a disservice uh, to electric cars if we're mandating and kind of helping electric cars, you know, at this point? So I, I've always believed that the incentives need to go away at a certain point. Uh, I had previously, you know, I've been in this industry now, Alex, for, for 15 years. I had always said somewhere around 2025 is when we should be sunsetting uh the incentives because I didn't think that they would be necessary anymore. I'm pushing that back a little bit more now to definitely by the end of this decade. I don't believe that there should be any more incentives uh, on electric vehicles. I don't think they'll be necessary. So we're looking at, you know, five years or less that we don't need to have any incentives. And why do we need to have the incentives? Well, you know, you've heard this before. It's new technology. Um, well, then you'll say, well, we, we didn't incentivize, you know, uh, cell phones or or uh, plasma tvs or whatever when they were new technology but there there's societal benefits to the new technology of electric vehicles of moving to zero transport zero emission vehicles and that's why government is involved and don't forget uh you know the the, the electric vehicles competing technology combustion vehicles the fuel for combustion vehicles is highly subsidized uh, oil exploration and um, so forth. The, the the big oil companies get hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars uh, of subsidies for e exploration, even protection to some point or military going into the Middle East, uh, you know, stabilizing unstable regimes or we actually, that's our goal, but then we make them more unstable. Um, but going in there and fighting wars in that area to protect uh, and stabilize the flow of oil, all that is is oil subsidies. Um, so, you know, if if we could eliminate oil subsidies, I would say, OK, on day one, let's let let's eliminate all electric vehicle subsidies also, because what would happen is the price of gas would go up so high that now it would make a much more compelling argument to pay a little bit more at the dealer for the electric vehicle because the overall life span, the, the cost of the uh, fueling it would be so much less. It might be two to three times less now, but if we removed all the oil and gas and fossil fuel, fossil fuel subsidies, it might be 10 times less. So, you know, if gas was, you know, $12 a gallon, $10 a gallon, $12 a gallon, you'd be looking at a, a lot better uh, return on your investment if you buy an electric car than, than you do today. All right. And I'm also kind of showing some of the comments that people are uh, uh, submitting for for the same topic. And yeah, I mean, I would agree. I mean, obviously, it's either, you know, equal playing field or, you know, the new technology, especially that achieve goal as achieving goals of, you know, breathing better and less lung cancer, you know, should kind of be, you know, the job of the government. Now that I live in Bangkok, I got to tell you, this is the first time that you know, it, it, it's been a problem. As a matter of fact, you know, I just did a you know, live stream last week and reposted it about, you know, one year review of my life here in Thailand. And I and I essentially said, I, and, and, and as you know, and then when you visited me here, I think you also kind of saw it firsthand that, you know, I love everything about this life except for one thing, which is pollution. 
and the pollution is quite brutal, which did affect my health, literally affected my health when we had the pollution season, you know, uh, when we had the rain, you know, and, and it comes in a city, right? Climate change, no climate change. It comes from the cars because it's just there's so many of them. There's tons of motorbikes and none of them are clean uh, fuel. So uh, it, it, is, it, it is a problem. And I feel like it does need to have a solution. Of course, we just... Nobel will ever agree on what, where's that line, right? How much of it is government? How much of it is is you know doing 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 business and capitalism? So um, and you know R. C. Robinson here also says, and I don't know about I'm not saying that this is the correct number, but he says seven million people die each year from air pollution related illnesses. Now, of course, those statistics are usually a little bit skewed because you know if somebody was already pretty sick. Uh, and it was going to go it's very soon. Then, you know, maybe the lung cancer that they got from, from the pollution pushed them over the edge. So this is probably not 100%, but it's it, it's definitely. I mean, I, I, I'm a pretty healthy guy and I'm relatively young in terms of, you know, how far I'm, I'm from my, you know, statistical death. And, you know, I have I was affected by this and probably will be next year to the point where I thought about either changing my lifestyle for two or three months where let's say I don't play soccer outside and I take cycling classes indoors or I literally go and spend two or three months either in Philippines and Bali, which is all nearby, um, just to avoid breathing the, the poison. So it, it, it really like it hits, it, it, hit, it hits home for me now, right? <clears throat> now that I'm experiencing it. Um, so, and, okay. So Aldo does make a good point and I have to concede, concede that. It's not like I didn't know about this before, but he said, you don't need to go to Thailand to appreciate car pollution, just because it's the south of Italy. And many, many other uh, uh, spots. Um, so, okay. Now, so we addressed the mandate. Um, but now, you know, the second clip that I played is, um, and I guess let's have been a little bit fun with it because I don't think this, there's any kind of a solution here. But uh, what do you think about essentially Donald Trump saying, hey, listen, I got to be four electric cars now. Uh, that um, that that Elon Musk endorsed me. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? So um, those of you that uh, have say followed Trump, and I followed him way before he was a political candidate. If, if uh, you, you know, I live here in New Jersey. Trump's uh, Bedminster uh, golf course, where, where or country club, where he spends most of his time. Even while he was president. He split half his time from uh, Bedminster, half his time down in Mar-a-Lago, a very small percentage of his time actually in the White House. It's like three miles from my house in a straight line, maybe a little bit more. Um, and and he's lived in this area his whole life. And I know people that know Donald Trump. I know families that know the Trumps. My brother-in-law worked for them. So I, I, I've i known him for, well, not really known him personally, but I know people, good friends that have known Donald Trump for the last 30 years. Uh, business people, one of the contractors that built one of my buildings when I used to do some commercial um, work, did a lot of concrete work for Donald Trump. So I, 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 I can say this with experience over knowing the man for 30 years, not personally, but through people. Donald Trump's very transactional. And what I mean by that is if somebody does something for him, he has to do something back. There's no like um, just uh like you uh, like well you, you know that was great thank you very much everything is a transaction he feels obligated to um do something if someone does something for him and likewise if he does something for somebody it, it's not just um you know oh what a nice guy no it's, he expects something done back for back to him and I, I think that's part of how he this came about well Elon Musk is, you know, this big billionaire, richest guy in the world. He's going to give me, you know, tens of millions of dollars. So I can't just continue to disparage electric vehicles. Okay, they're good now. Okay, I guess I guess I have to. And in his own words, I guess I have to like electric cars now. So that totally wasn't a surprise to me, at least, um, because that's that's Donald Trump. He's a very transactional person. There's everything is business. Everything is you did a now i do b so fair enough and by the way there's something to be said about that in general and you know the, i feel like the other side does it as well they're maybe not as honest 
uh, about it. And I don't mean, I'm not even using the word honest here in a positive way. Sometimes you, as a politician, you don't always want to disclose stuff like this up front or like out and about, but whatever, we know that's how, you know, Trump is. Now let's talk about uh, Elon Musk here, because on one hand, I want to say, hey, listen, just as far as topic of electric cars, it's obviously a good thing that Elon Musk kind of cozied up to Donald Trump because no matter who, you know, wins the election, technically it's going to be president who will be for electric for electric cars, right? Trump because of Elon Musk and Harris because they're Democrats, right? So I feel like on one hand, it was kind of a good thing for electric cars that, uh, that, that Elon did that. On another hand, you know, um, there is a poll that uh, was done by Civic Science uh, that's kind of a pollster organization. And, you know, their poll showed that those people who normally vote Democrat, um, uh, their interest in, in Tesla has fallen from, I believe, like 60 percent to like 20 percent. Again, these are rough numbers. I, 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 I don't quote me a minute, but I remember it was like one third, uh, which means that, you know, and I would say at least half of the people who buy Teslas are tend to be more liberal, you know, it, it, with already slumping sales. And Tesla is literally the only a car company that sells electric cars that has their sales gone down this year. Um, you know, now that Democrats, you know, might feel that by giving Tesla money when they're purchasing Teslas, you know, part of it goes to uh, Elon Musk and part of that goes to Elon Trump, the candidate they want to vote against. And a lot of them believe that he's evil and will destroy the country. Right. So, I mean, I expect the Q3 to, to be disastrous. A quarter for for tesla so you know could it be that it could be good for electric cars but bad specifically for tesla what are your thoughts on that so i'm sorry broke up just a little bit at the end just give me that last question over so basically i'm just saying that it you know endorsement of donald trump by elon musk could be good thing for electric cars in general mm -hmm but a very bad thing for Tesla in particular, which is the leader of the electric car industry. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I might have a little bit of a different opinion on this than a lot of people, Alex, quite honestly. Um, That's why I have you on. I, <laughs> you know? I, I, don't, I don't think it really matters uh, uh, which, which person is elected uh, president as far as electric cars are concerned. Um, it, it, in the very short term, it could matter. But don't forget, you know, you, you, if if you want to say, well, the obvious answer is, you know, it's 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 good for electric vehicles if um, Harris gets elected. It might be bad for electric vehicles if Trump gets elected, because you know he said a lot of bad things about him. Only recently, you know, you know he's had this transaction where he said, okay, I guess I gotta like them now. Um, the the fact of the matter is, we went through a Trump presidency four years ago. It didn't slow down the uh, sale of electric vehicles at all. It didn't do anything to, let's say, hold back the electric vehicle evolution. And it won't do it again. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, a Harris um, presidency, I don't think will speed up the, uh, the the transition to electric vehicles. The industry is going to do it on its own, regardless of who's president. Uh, you know, it's a global industry. Uh, we we see where this industry is going. It's it's a fait accompli. It's it's inevitable, in my opinion, that at some point in the 2030s, whether it's the mid 2030s towards the end of the 2030s, it's going to be the end of combustion. When, when I say the end of combustion, I mean you know 90 plus percent of the vehicles are are, are, are going to be fully electric, not even hybrids, by the end of next decade. And it doesn't matter. It's all white noise right now with one presidential candidate saying that he likes them and the other one saying that they don't. And, um, it, you know, it, it's a global industry. Uh, the, the automakers know this. Their product planning spans, you know, one or two life cycles down the road. All the automakers now are planning and, and they're already developing vehicles that are going to come out three or four years from now. So it, it, the vehicles that they're working on now are going to come out when the next president's in their last year of, of office. So it, it almost doesn't matter. I've, I've sat in on meetings with the automakers here, U.S. automakers, where high level pr people in the company discussed this and said, look, we we can't we don't make plans on the next president because th th by the time our product actually hits the market, 
the president that just got elected will be off. They don't make electric vehicles in two years or gas vehicles in two years, Alex. They, they have, you know, three to four years of, of R&D and design. I mean, look when Tesla started working on the Cybertruck compared to when it went, when it actually, the tires hit the pavement. So uh, to me, you know, it, it's all white noise with, with one president saying they're for him, one president saying against him. Yes, let's say Trump is elected and let's say uh, he takes a hard anti-electric vehicle stance and does what he can to um, limit the EPA's influence. I mean, there was discussions of abolishing the EPA entirely uh, if, if, if Trump gets elected. Um, uh, trying to um, uh, walk back the incentives, okay, all that, um, that will hurt uh, short-term, electric vehicle says. Let's say somehow they were able to, in the first year of a, of a second term for Trump, um, eliminate all the incentives. Let's, let's say they could do that, which I don't think they can. I think it would take years if they could even undo that. But let's say they were able to. Well, so, um, so hold on a second. So yeah. I, I believe that, yes, to kind of, to cancel out a bill, you have to have another bill, right? And for that, you need to have both houses and some time and all yeah. that stuff. However, the, the the president and administration can essentially take the money that was allocated for something. Like, for example, Donald Trump said he would take the money that's allocated for, let's say, the infrastructure and um, uh, reallocate it to building more roads, bridges, and so forth, which is within his power or his administration's power. So I just want to mention that. So, yeah, uh, don't forget, Alex. A, a, a huge swaths of that money has already been allocated. You can't take it back from companies that have signed agreements. And I know you mentioned before only, let's say, 20 sites have uh, have have been turned on. But there's hundreds of them that are in the process that are, you know, they broke ground, they're having permits. And yes, going back to that topic, I, I work intimately with some of the infrastructure companies. It takes a long time to get a site between uh, you know, site location to approvals, utility um, interconnection, and then turn in the key. There's a supercharger station that's been installed and ready to open not far from where I live. And it's been sitting that way for a year, but it can't open because of some type of a problem with either the utility or the, or the, uh, or, 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 or permitting. And this happens all over. So it takes a while to get these things online. So Let's say he's able to do that. And I don't even know for a fact you, that that what you're saying is 100 percent true, that when he gets elected, he can just say, OK, all that money that was going for EV charging, I'm going to put it into bridges. Maybe he can. Maybe he can't. Let's say he could. A, a, a tremendous amount of that money has already been allocated. He can't take it from the companies that have signed contracts that are installing uh, the, 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 the chargers. And even if they did, um, you know, private enterprise is is going to pick up on that. I mean, you look at what Tesla's done without uh, uh, much public money with the supercharger network. We have this new company called Ionity, uh, Iona, that's that's coming here in the U.S. that that uh, I'm actually going to be interviewing uh, some of their principals soon for state of charge. You know, they they seem to have their act together and want to be a force in in uh, in in North America as far as a charging network. They seem to have learned from some of the mistakes that some of the other networks have had. So we're, we're going to get the charging, whether or not it's funded by the U.S. or private enterprise out. It's going to come. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I like I said, I think it's white noise. Um, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, and there's nothing that if Trump were to take a hard line against electric vehicles, if he gets elected and on day one, he goes, this is going to be my focus. I'm going to kill electric vehicles. I'm not saying he's going to say that, but let's say he were to say that. I'm going to repeal every, you know, pro-electric vehicle uh, legislation we have. It's not going to make a difference. This is a global industry. The industry is moving towards electric vehicles. You know what it's going to make a difference in else? It's going to hurt the U.S. car companies because they would, let's say, be given a, a, a little bit of a breather to, let's say, not focus on EVs over the next three or four years. Um, and what's going to happen is that's going to put GM and Ford in an even worse position. In my opinion, the best thing that could happen to GM and Ford here in the U.S. would be to keep the pressure on them to develop strong electric vehicle programs, because if they don't, they're going to get swallowed up by this industry in 10 or 15 years. They're going to be small niche players that have lost an enormous percentage of their market share because the Koreans, 
The Korean car manufacturers are going full bore. China's going full bore. We're not going to be able to keep China out of the U.S. We could we could put tariffs. We could do a whole lot of things. One way or another, they're getting in here with, with their low-cost, high-quality electric vehicles. Europe's doing a better job with, with – they're putting out more and more electric vehicles, the European car makers. So here's here's – you know, if we want to lose auto manufacturing here in the U.S., then OK, you know, focus on combustion and, and, and all the other companies in the next decade will just eat your lunch. All right. Yeah. You, you just covered three huge topics. You know, yeah. let me let me back up a little as I, as I took a little notes here. So first of all, I, you know, in terms of saying uh, which administration is 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 better, you know, and, and, and going to support more electric cars. So you know it's weird. Um, I just uh, had a had a conversation with with my date. Actually, my date. I just wanted to make sure she got home okay. She did. Okay, yeah. So I was just talking to her, and you know she's obviously Thai. And I said, you know, we were talking about you know because today was a big news because the party that won the election here was just dissolved by the Supreme Court uh, here in Thailand. And you know I was just telling her that you know um, you know be careful what you wish for. Because I said, listen, you know, you guys have a lot of things that we in America don't have. Free health care, pretty much non-existing crime, um, you know, well-sourced food that hasn't been like monopolized by one company. There's a lot of things you guys have. And, and, and if you're going to start moving into that direction, you know, you, you be prepared to become American. I don't mean it in a good way. But I also pointed out, and this is to your point, is that, you know, since I came to America, I went through and I was been more, more than 30 years, right? I went through, what is it, uh, Bush, Clinton, oh, well, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, and now Biden. And if I think about, generally speaking, has anything changed for uh, an average American in America throughout those many different presidents and as opposite as, as they were? I mean, Obama and Trump, probably the most opposite presidents back to back, right? Just in terms of like the most basic you know, uh, human life needs, you know, the health care, the crime, you know, all of that other stuff. And I think the answer is no. The answer is no. Yeah, we did a lot of things about stuff that doesn't really affect a lot of people. I mean, you may feel, you know, strongly about abortion, for example, but at the end of the day, you know, it is probably not a topic that you're going to need to really worry it's going to affect your life, right? Versus, let's say, health care or crime. So, you know, and, 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 and I'm, I'm thinking like, well, if none of these presidents throughout all these decades were able to really affect the most important parts of, of, of American lives, are they really going to affect their lives as far as which, what, whether or not they're driving an electric car sooner rather than later? So that's to your first point. Uh, the, uh, um, the second point, and, you know, I was actually going to ask you this a little bit later about the uh, about the mandates uh, and and just generally speaking about, uh, you know, what the government can and cannot do. I mean, in California, there is technically a mandate, right? Because essentially the standards for, for cars, specifically also electric cars, that California sets, even though it's just one state, but because of such a huge market, not only many other states adopted, but essentially when cars you know, get imported or made for the U.S. market, a lot of times, you know, these automakers go, go like, okay, we'll, we'll just make them for California because if we make them for California, we can sell them in all 50 states. So it's something that's to be said that, you know, California does have technically a, a, a mandate or, or a goal, as you say, um, and that's not something that is in, uh, in, in, in the power of a U.S. president, no matter who he or she is. Um, and, and that's the mandate that everybody has to, a bye-bye, which is California. That cannot be changed no matter what. Um, and lastly, and I guess this is what I want to ask you, is that, you know, a lot of people said this, and I don't necessarily disagree, is that, okay, you can be for electric cars, but to be against mandates. You know, now, my, my answer to that is, you know, yes, but usually when people are for electric cars, they're also for, for mandates. For example, like, I don't like pizza. You know, but if I was to tell you that I, I I love Pizza Hut, the restaurant, you'll be like, oh, 
that's a little weird. I mean, yes, there's a possibility that I just might, might, might love their breadsticks and just go there for that. But usually people who love pizza, uh, they, they, they love Pizza Hut. People who don't like pizza, they don't go to Pizza Hut. So people who usually don't support electric car mandates, usually not exactly pro-electric cars. Do you think those are mutually exclusive? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying there. Um, I, I don't know if they're mutually exclusive, but uh, I, I agree along the lines of, of, of that. But one of the things I learned here is that you don't like pizza. I can't even believe we're friends if, if you don't like pizza. But I, I digress. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, I'm sorry. I, I, my family didn't have enough money to have. I, As a matter of fact, I don't even think we had pizza. Pizza was a, is Russia a local option. Well, are you kidding me? Pizza was like for poor people. You could you no, could in, buy a large in America. Pie. Well, American poor people. Well, not, not in Russian. Like you we could, did not you could have, feed a family I've never of had four a hamburger. for like ten bucks. No, that is we live. No, the thing is, pizza wasn't a type of food that yeah. you would have like for example the first time i tried a hamburger is when mcdonald's came to russia and they were the first ones pretty much to serve this weird thing where it's a bread and there's another bread and there's fat you know like it's crazy or french fries for example so no i i didn't even get to have a chance to like pizza um <laughs> but i do have to say that i did have pizza yesterday because it was a you know a buffet and i was like all right i mean it's cheese and it's bread so i might as well have it as as a side dish but uh, yeah, but go on. I didn't know that my pizza uh, a reference was a trigger for you, uh, but I understand. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I, I generally agree with what you said before. I'm not. Uh, I really. Do, I don't need to expand much on it uh, as far as you know, being mutually exclusive. I, I kind of tend to agree with you. Okay, so. And I just saw a comment here because BYD Island, I think you saw what's happening here with BYD where, and I, I told you when I got here a little over a year ago, you know, the few electric cars that I saw were mainly Teslas, right? Now, not only we have way more electric cars, like a majority of them is BYD and they are already selling more models here than Tesla. They're already cheaper and more popular and so forth. Um, and then we have tons of other electric car, uh, cars here from, from, from China. But, you know, I, 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 here's the thing. I, I, it's, you know, I, I, I saw Pete Buttigieg talk about it. And at first I was like, ah, I don't agree there with Pete. But then I was like, you know what? He might have a point. He basically says that the competition is a little weird, you know, for electric cars. Because electric car makers that are from, you know, America and Europe, they are having to compete in a capitalist society, right? Where Chinese automakers kind of competing in more of a communist society because the government is behind them, right? The incentives uh, in many different ways, uh, the su tax subsidies and just overall, you know, when a Chinese government backs something up, it's going to happen in a big way, right? So when the Chinese government is giving so much power and, 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 and money and and freedom to 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 the electric car makers in 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 China, and they have and then and then the European and American companies have to compete. You know, it's kind of an unfair competition. But you know, life's not fair. And you know, if we don't want to lose this, and if America doesn't want to lose this to China, the government is better actually step in in if anything help electric cars rather than just lose this to to China. And I think we are. I, I, I mean. America has been losing a lot to China and, and you don't want such a big industry as transportation to also lose to China. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, um, you, as you know, you and I have been in China at the same time uh, together. I've been to China quite a few times. Um, you know, what China is doing is really remarkable right now with cars. For years, nobody would buy Chinese cars because they, they were such low quality. All the vehicles in China, not all the vehicles, there were Chinese car companies, but they were garbage. Uh, the, the majority of the vehicles there were partnerships with established brands where, you know, European companies and American companies and Japanese companies would go to China, form a partnership. Well, they had to. They couldn't just sell their cars their own. China government forced them to have a partnership with a local Chinese company and make cars there. And it was the only way that they had good quality vehicles. Uh, and... Um, 
Now it's a different story because what they decided was basically we're never going to be able to build combustion engines and transmissions well on our own, but we can do this electric thing. You know, it's uh, electric vehicles are a lot less complicated. They're software defined. There's not, you don't have to develop super complicated motors and engines, which they were at uh, transmissions. They were never good at, um, they could copy things, but they would never, they just could never make their own good motors and engines but they could with electric vehicles. So, you know, at some point, 10, 12 years ago, the Chinese government said, okay, we're going to be major players in, in automobiles, even though we're not now. And this is how we're going to do it. The path forward is electric vehicles. We don't know if they're going to be here in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, but the entire industry is going to be electric. So we're going to start investing in it now. We're going to subsidize companies. We're going to give companies, you know, free land to build factories. We'll even give them the money to build the factories because we want to be a powerhouse with the, in the automobile industry and and they've done that and we're seeing the fruits of their investment now and chinese cars i can't believe uh, how good the quality that they are i've driven them i've been over to china i've seen them in, in 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 europe and other countries they're now on par with the established brands the, even the 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 premium brands and that's scary because they're able to build them for less as as you said because they get subsidies the government backs them. They don't have to worry about funding half the time. They need money. Okay, you know, how much money do you need? You want to build a factory? You want to build two factories? Okay, we'll float it at a real low interest rate and um, and and give you the land to, to, to put the factory on, give you a hundred year lease on a plot of land on, you know, 500 acres or whatever. Um, so it's tough for uh, other brands, regardless of where they're from, to compete with that. Uh, so, we, you know, we need to have some sort of a, a, a balance, some sort of free trade. I, I'm I'm not for just allowing China to come here and dump all their products, you know, not just cars, all their cars here, um, all, all their products here. There should be some sort of a, a fair balance with, with that. But the devil's always in the details. You know, the Biden administration now just increased the tariffs to 100 percent on the cars, basically. You know, you you can't import cars from China here now because even though they make them less expensive, they're not twice as they're not twice as uh, half as expensive where they can do a hundred percent tax. But that's just a band aid. That's just trying to say, okay, we don't know how to deal with this, so we're going to stop it right now. Now we've already heard that some Chinese companies are going to maybe build factories in uh, Mexico or Canada or you know even in the U.S. To, Actually, to, to Thailand. Get this. Thailand, the is Thailand, a yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you know, there's countries that we have free trade agreements with, and so forth. So they're they're, they're gonna get here, is what I'm saying. I know they're gonna get here. So we need whether it's a Trump administration or a Harris administration, we need to have some sort of a plan for how we're gonna deal with this to make it fair. And I don't I don't pretend to have the answers, Alex. I don't know what it is. Is it a 20 percent tax? I don't know. Um, but I do think we need to somehow make it fair because it's not fair for the Chinese companies to be able to come into Europe and the U.S. right now and sell a car, you know, at 50 percent the cost or, or 75 percent the cost that, a, that a, a, a U.S. manufacturer can make it and sell it for because the, the government subsidizing the rest of that. So we have to come up with a comprehensive plan. I don't know if we're going to. Because let's face it, our government is just dysfunctional now. Um, if the Republicans came up with a great plan, the Democrats would stop them from doing it. The same way that the Republicans stopped the Democrats from doing things. The, the Biden administration had a plan, a border security plan this last year. Even many Republicans backed it, but um, it wasn't allowed to get passed through because the Republicans can't give the Democrats a win the same way the Democrats won't give the Republicans a win. So am I uh, hopeful that we're going to actually solve this? No, I'm not, because we're, we're in this stalemate now, this dysfunctional stalemate with our government isn't working for us anymore. It's only working for the party's best interest. Um, but we need to come up with something. We need to figure out how to deal with this or the, the Fords, the GMs, uh, they're, 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 they're going to go out of business. They're, they're going to get overwhelmed with low cost electric vehicles that are going to flood our shores over the course of the next 15 years. But, but here's my problem with this. Okay. Just to play devil's advocate, I don't hundred percent 
agree with what I'm just about to say, but just to play as devil's advocate, I mean, you know, where do we draw a line? Because we have no problems, uh, uh, you know, wearing clothes that is made in China that's much cheaper. And, you know, those clothing companies in China that imported this in America drove a lot of American companies out of business. Same thing with many, many other products, including electronics and, you know, everything else. They, you know, we accepted that stuff from China it's going to be more affordable and that's going to be good for the American consumer, even though despite that a lot of American companies are going to go out of business, there's going to be less taxes paid, there's going to be less jobs, right? How, how are cars that much different? Because essentially, if you just think about consumers, you can argue that, listen, I don't care who, who these companies, are, where, the, where this coming from. I want the most affordable, you know, car, uh, uh, the, the, for, for, you know, and, and the best bang for that buck. Right. I don't care. Just like people don't care where their clothes comes from. Why do we need to care about where the cars come from? What, what would you what would you say to that? They're not different. It's it's, you know, a, 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 a manufacturing job was no less valuable than a job making power tools or sheetrock or clothing that we that we've seeded uh, many years ago. Um, but, you know, just because we've we've perhaps mishandled this in the past doesn't mean that we need to continue to mishandle it. Uh, you know, at some point, uh, you know, there'll be nothing left if, if, if we're allowed to continue to have unfair trade, you know, yeah, um, uh, we, 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 we got in the seventies, really in the eighties, we got drunk off of cheap, uh, you know, low cost imports. You know, it, it's, you know, we, we were consumer crazy because we could buy so much stuff that was so much less than, than uh, than what we what we would have paid if it was all manufactured here, and it doesn't even have to be so much less. It, if it was a dollar less, you know, well, it was a dollar in my pocket, so I'm going to buy that shirt uh, because it's a dollar less. But at some point, you, you know, if we lose the entire um, manufacturing sector, uh, you know, what, what what where where are we? You know, so uh, yeah. I, I yeah. hope it doesn't and, happen. I hope we don't lose that. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, I, we went, wow, we went for an hour and a half. That's insane. It's 1.30 in the morning here in Bangkok. And it's, uh, what time is it where you're at, Tom? Uh, it's 2.30 in the afternoon. And I don't All see right. you on the screen. Oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I did. Obviously, my brain is going. So uh, thanks so much, Tom, for joining me. Uh, I'm hoping we can do this again more often than, I mean, I don't know the last time I even had a live stream and, and you were on, but we should do this more often. It's always a pleasure. So I'll, I'll let you go now and wrap things up. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. Great to be back, Alex. And uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. All right. Okay, guys. So by the way, if you have not seen Tom's channel, um, you should be arrested and tried. Uh, but uh, there is a way to correct that. Uh, please go to his channel, uh, State of Charge. Honestly, and like, you know, even though Tom is a personal friend of mine, you know, he is, I would argue, one of the best, if not the best, uh, electric vehicle uh, journalists out there. His channel is the best channel for electric car charging. Um, the information that he has there, not only just gold, but it comes from not only his experience of trying literally everything everywhere in all parts of the world with all types of chargers, but also talking and, 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 and to, to people who design and make them. And it, it's the the ridiculous amount of knowledge that Tom has in his head. I don't think anyone else has when it comes to charging uh, electric vehicles. So um, if, if you own an electric car, I would like to own an electric car and you, car and you know that charging is, is, is important, uh, you must subscribe to his channel. Uh, it is very simple, uh, youtube.com slash state of charge. And he's also Tom Malog on um, uh, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. And Tom is kicking ass in both YouTube and 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 Twitter. So um, please check him out. Um, I want to thank all of you guys for actually keeping it pretty reasonably uh, for most of the time, uh, sane um, and uh, and civil. Which you know, I wish more of other political and any other kinds of debates would, would be in, 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 in America. So uh, I am going to be back here pretty much at exactly the same time, uh, you know, which is midnight here in Bangkok, around noon California time. So uh, join me next time. Uh, Tom, might, Tom might be back. I actually am thinking about having a couple of other guests that you're very familiar. Or it's just going to be me uh, talking to you guys uh, here in the live chat. So 
Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.